Hello and welcome. This is Matthias Müll for marmoworld.com and welcome to the second part of our tips about rotoscoping and tracking in Mocha and After Effects. And so this is a sample project that we are using during these quick tips. So we've got here this sign that is replaced by this uh, new one. And in the first part we already did this basic replacement, as you can see here. And what we want to do now in the second part is to ba add back this car here uh, in the foreground. And so currently we have this background layer and we have here this new insert. And essentially what you can usually do for those kind of foreground layers is to put a new layer with the original back on top and then draw a mask around it. And I want to keep here only the parts that are not semi-transparent. You can see the big issue here is that we have motion blur. Yeah. So uh, like this, it's obviously not looking too realistic because this motion blur is missing here. And now if I would start adding some mask feather like this, you can see you get here those nice semi-transparent areas of the walk uh, of the motion blur back. But also you can see that here parts of the old sign yeah, of, of this uh, text here come through. And so in this part I want to show you how to get rid of this problem. So what do we do? We first want to do this kind of rotoscoping that we started here in a new composition. So I delete this layer and take my original clip and drag it into a new composition. And let's name this uh, car roto, for example. Maybe I clean up my project. This was my main composition that we created last time. Here I've got my footage. Here is the footage. Here I've got my main composition and my car roto composition, in which we want to work now. And we go to the first frame where the car is overlapping with the sign yeah, and we draw a mask around it. So we make sure the layer is selected, choose our pen tool and draw a mask. And note that this mask really just needs to be accurate in the region where it overlaps with the sign and we only want to include regions that are not semi-transparent, so where nothing from the old sign shows through because we definitely want to avoid having this in our end again here in the bottom part it's not too too important to be accurate since we only are interested in the overlap with the sign anyway. And then here these last uh, keyframes I draw away in the back because the car will go to the left over time so it's good to have the, a larger mask here. Okay now we have just the hard part of the uh, of the car so to speak yeah? and we to, to like fake recreate some part of the motion blur in the background, we duplicate this with the mask, put it behind the original one, and on the duplicate we add some blur. We add some directional blur here and drag it on the lower copy because we don't want to blur this entire image, we essentially just want to blur the border and therefore we blur something uh, behind the original layer, yeah, so to speak. So we increase it and you can see some something is appearing here and currently it's going in the wrong direction because this is set to zero degree and we want to set it to 90. And now it goes in the right direction and now we essentially have to dial in how much this uh, should be and we best do this by uh, looking simultaneously at our original main composition. Yeah? So we go to our main composition and bring our rotoscoped composition inside of there. So we take our car roto layer and put it here on top. And we must obviously go to the frame where we have started our rotoscoping for. So here this one, this frame. Now this is the same that we have here for our car roto now. Uh, and now I go here, click on this composition name and say new comp viewer, which creates a second comp viewer for me and maybe I place this on top of here to save some space. And now we can go back to our car roto like this, and dial in these parameters. So in particular here from the motion blur, the blur length until it, let me close this window here entirely so that this roto stays open until it somehow fits uh, the blur length here above yeah, that, that we can see here. So this is a faked one. And you can see a problem is that this 
seems to be quite long this blur at the moment but it starts disappearing quite quickly it's like it's very transparent already from the beginning on and we can change this by also adding on top of the blur effect a curves effect because we want to essentially tell the layer please uh, don't get transparent so quickly we can do this by saying we take a curve effects choose to only modify the alpha channel and then uh, create here a curve that is shaped somehow like this now you can see much more of the colors are coming through so we we want to have a curve going here and now we don't really want it to be clipped at the top which means like we have a large area where we have no transparency at all so we try to here bend the curve a bit to be not clipped at the top but follow the top pretty closely yeah now you can see much more of this motion blur is showing through yeah this is like original mask with just the original motion blur that we try to recreate on the, on the parts where the sign is not and here we have on top our uh, faked motion blur obviously you can see we still have an edge here visible and we can avoid this by doing a little bit of feather adding a little bit of feather to the mask of our uh, top layer so the top layer which just contributes this area and not this one we add a little bit of feather to that you can see now it starts disappearing here uh, and uh, another thing is that obviously now when we feather this mask we have some danger that some of the text of the old sign is coming through yeah, if we say we have a feather of 33 we it's this is going to 50 percent to the inside of the mask and 50 percent to the outside yeah you can see this if we solo this layer here and pump this up quite a bit you can see it fe it's feathering here but it's also feathering on the outside bringing back some of the pro problematic text that we don't want to have i think something like 32 is a good value here but it should only go to the inside so therefore we also set a mask expansion yeah like making it smaller and since we've got a feather of 32 we do half of this so minus 16 and now we are sure that it only feathers to the inside okay now we can bring back our uh, our blurred variant maybe we can improve the blur even more by saying obviously we sh do, do not only have a blur in this direction so not only a directional blur but it should also blur a little bit uh, up and down so to speak yeah so we can combine this with a simple fast blur also on the lower layer no yeah and the fast blur should usually not be as much as the directional blur and we want it to be on on top of the curves effect yeah so like first the directional blur to create the general fuzzy uh, motion blur and then a little bit of blur in all directions just a little bit maybe just 10 or so to create a little bit more fuzzy and now this already looks pretty good and um, now we have one problem still and this is that this motion blur that we've created here yeah. is not only added on top of the sign but it's also added in these regions here and here where we already have some motion blur yeah so the problem is we only want to add the motion blur on top of this new insert and not everywhere else because everywhere else we already have some motion blur and adding it there again we would get it twice which which would mean you always have much less of it on top of the sign than you have outside of it how can we do this? We can do this by using a mat for this car roto layer, meaning please put the car roto layer only there where we have our new insert. So let me first make sure here that all the motion blur in this precomp is uh, made visible, yeah, such that you can better see here in the main composition what is going on. And now to like limit the new insert, limit this car roto layer only to the region of the new insert we need to use this insert as a track mat of the car roto layer and but for using it as a track mat it needs to be on top of it and we want to insert it behind it so this means we need two copies and since i don't really want to keep two copies uh, in sync it's like when you modify one of them you also need to modify the other one we rather put this in a precomp yeah because when you put it in a precomp then we can use this precomp twice and when we want to modify it we can 
modify it in the precomp and both copies automatically update. So to precompose it, we select it and say layer precompose. Make sure that we leave all attributes or to move all attributes in the new composition yeah, because we want to have everything inside there just once. Call this insert corner pin precomp. And now I click Command or Control D to duplicate the layer and put the duplicate on top of our car roto and now say please use the alpha mat of this. Yeah, and now you can see it becomes automatically invisible here, the layer, but it is now a matte layer for the car roto. And we see this if we solo it, you can see that instead, so if we set this track mat to no track mat, the entire thing is visible. And now if we say track mat alpha mat, it limits it to the region of this new insert. So there's one tiny little problem. You can see that here the edge is still showing through. And this is some like rounding issues with the alpha channels, uh, so with, with the edges here. So you need to make sure that this copy of our insert that we use for uh, as a mat for our car roto, that the alpha channel of this gets a big bit uh, bigger. And we can do this by applying a mat choker effect to this um, mat layer. Yeah, and now we just need to increase here the choke, or to actually to lower it. Yeah, and this you now you can see without the effect you've got pretty much of an edge visible, and with the effect you have much less. And now still at some point there is a little bit of an edge less uh, left. So if we just increase this softness here too, we can do this until the edge disappears. Okay, that's a general principle how you can fake those uh, missing motion blurs if you need to put foreground elements in front of your car, uh, in front of your insert. Of course, you now still need to animate this mask here. Yeah, So you need to go through here. And I mean, usually this is not too much. So in this case, we've got, uh, let me make the mask visible again, go to you to my composition. Yeah. In order to see what we are doing, I just temporarily disable the mode of this mask here. Make sure that I set a keyframe on the mask part and now I go to the next frame, move the mask in place, go to the next frame, move the mask in place. And again, make sure I don't accidentally include any of the semi-transparent regions where we can see the sign. Let me just finish this on this frame here too. And now here the sign is fully covered. And if we now turn on the visibility again, and we make sure that we copy the same mask pass that we now just keyframed, uh, select the mask pass, edit, copy, and go here to the mask on the second layer and say edit, paste. Now we have the same keyframes here on the second mask too. And so now we can go back to our main composition and quickly review our faked motion blur here. And you can see that the, that the sign here, the new insert is nicely covered with this semi-transparent motion blur, but nothing from the old text shows through. Okay, obviously you have to do the same for the second part where the car leaves, the, the back of the car leaves the frame again, but the technique is the same here. So I'm not going to bore you with uh, doing all this in this screencast. Okay, so that's it for this part. I hope you enjoyed it. In the next part of our series, we look at how to bring back these hands of these people holding the sign here. So if you look close, you can see here the two hands of this boy are in front of the sign. And now they are, of course, covered by the sign. So how do we bring them back? And I'm going to show you a really super easy and in particular very quick technique to bring those hands back here. Once again, a reminder, this footage that I'm using here is kindly provided by Artbeats. So please check out their website and check out the great Artbeats Express, a great stock footage that they have there. Um, again, my name is Matthias. I'm here uh, at marmoworld.com and I'm looking forward to see you again in the next tutorial.